trust. Oh, that's the real joke, isn't it? Everyone's obsessed with it, building trust, earning trust, giving trust. But let me tell you a little secret. Trust is a weapon, sharp, deadly, and most of all, it cuts both ways. And the people you're so quick to trust, they're the ones who will stick that knife in your back when you're not looking. Why? Because they can. Because they know exactly where to strike. You handed them the blade yourself, didn't you? You see, there's this lie we all cling to, that friends, your precious little circle, will always have your back. But let me tell you something about friends. Friends are like mirrors, reflecting back what you want to see. They say the right things, smile at the right times, but behind all that, they're waiting for you to slip, waiting for that moment when you're vulnerable, when you're exposed. And when that moment comes, they strike. Why? Because deep down, every friend wants what you have. Every friend's a little envious, a little bitter, a little tired of playing second fiddle in your life. Think about it. How many times have you seen it? The co-worker who trusted his buddy at the office only to find out that his friend was feeding his ideas to the boss. The family member who spilled secrets to someone they thought was blood only to see it used against them at the next family dinner. Friends know your weaknesses, your vulnerabilities, because you give it to them willingly. You trust them. You make yourself weak in front of them, thinking it's safe, thinking it's real. But oh, how easily that trust can be flipped, twisted, weaponized. Now here's the twist, the part people don't want to admit. They put their faith in friends because it's easy. It feels good. You see, friends tell you what you want to hear. They'll comfort you. Soothe your ego, stroke your pride. They'll keep you nice and cozy, living in your little delusions. And that's where the danger lies, my friend. Comfort is the enemy of power. You get too comfortable, too trusting, and that's when you're at your weakest. That's when they strike, because trust blinds you. It makes you complacent. It's a slow poison that dulls your instincts until, before you know it, you're at the mercy of those who know you best. But enemies... Now there's where the fun begins. See, enemies don't lie to you. Oh no. They're the ones who keep you sharp, keep you on your toes. They don't bother with sweet words or fake smiles. They show you exactly who they are, blunt, brutal, and honest. They're not trying to comfort you, they're trying to take you down. And that's where their real value lies. An enemy, you see, can be trusted to be an enemy. Predictable, clear. You know where you stand with them. Take your everyday situation, at the office, in the family, wherever. Let's call him Bob. Bob's got this old friend, Steve. They've worked together for years, thick as thieves. Bob trusts Steve with everything, his ideas, his plans. But what Bob doesn't realize is that Steve's been waiting for his moment. And one day, when Bob's not paying attention, Steve swoops in, takes credit for Bob's work, and suddenly, Bob's out in the cold. Why? because Steve had access. He knew where Bob's weak spots were, and Bob, well, he was blinded by trust. Poor Bob. Now, let's say instead of trusting Steve, Bob kept his distance, kept his cards close to his chest. Maybe he even made an ally out of his office rival, Sarah. You see, Sarah doesn't like Bob. She's made that clear from day one. But Sarah's ambition? Well, that's useful. Bob knows exactly what Sarah wants, and because they aren't friends, there's no pretending, no sugarcoating. Bob uses Sarah's ambition to get what he needs. Maybe they strike a deal. Maybe they work together on something they both benefit from. No trust required, just mutual need. Bob stays sharp. Sarah stays predictable, and both of them win. Steve, he's left in the dust, wondering what happened. That's the real power play. Learn how to use your enemies. They're far more valuable than your so-called friends. Your enemies will keep you focused, keep you alert, because they force you to watch your back. You're always calculating, always strategizing, you never get soft. Friends, they lull you into a false sense of security. Enemies, they make sure you stay alive. And don't get me started on how people love to collect enemies. Oh, they love to hate, don't they? The rival at work, the annoying neighbor, the ex. But here's the thing. Enemies can be your greatest tool if you know how to use them. 
You've got to think like a chess player, not a pawn. A pawn thinks in one move, a chess player thinks three moves ahead. Enemies can be turned into allies, used to further your goals. It's all about manipulation, baby, turning their hatred, their drive into something that works for you. You see, the trick is, enemies don't stab you in the back. No, they come at you from the front, and that's what makes them valuable. You can see them coming. You know their next move. Friends? Oh, they'll smile in your face and hold the knife behind their back, waiting for just the right moment to slip it between your ribs. They want to see you fall just as much, but they'll make sure you trust them first, make sure you don't see it coming. So what's the lesson here? Never put too much trust in friends. Learn how to use enemies. Friends are too easy, too safe, and power doesn't come from safety. Power comes from understanding the battlefield. Friends will make you weak. Enemies will keep you strong. In the end, the only person you can truly trust is yourself. And isn't that the real joke? In this little dance of power, you're alone. Friends are a lie. Enemies are tools. And you? You're the only one who knows the truth. So go ahead, put your faith in friends if you want. But don't be surprised when you're the one lying in the dirt, staring up at the stars, wondering how you got there. Because trust, yeah, trust is the deadliest game of all.